So I have a secret, a secret Pinterest board <laughs> that's literally just for me. And it's where I save dream projects, anything that strikes creative inspiration. And this board really has no timeline, no real agenda. And I find eventually the quote unquote right time to take on any one of these projects just presents itself to me in many different ways. Sometimes I'll take on a project when I'm feeling low on creative juices. This board is like a literal easy reminder of things that once created or sparked an idea for me. It can ease with the intimidation of starting from a metaphorical blank page. It's almost as if I've already given myself the first paragraph. Sometimes these projects come back to me in the form of an amazing thrift store find, like this one right here. I pinned this cabinet from Crate and Barrel forever ago with no real goal in mind to recreate it. All I knew was that I loved the shape of it and wanted to do something inspired by it. The question though is, to doors or not to doors? Do I add the doors or do I not add the doors? Risk of me not pulling off the doors in a way that would make me happy? Potentially high. <laughs> Risk of it looking way cooler with the doors, also potentially high. Dearest Jim Morrison, please advise me to doors or not to doors. I promise you that was in no way intentional. <laughs> Sometimes the universe just works out like that and it's really funny. <sighs> or other times there's a project that can only be explained as an itch in a place that is impossible to reach and therefore impossible to forget. It's almost like I must make this thing or it will never leave me alone. Seriously, sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night with an epiphany on how I can tackle a certain project because I just have to figure it out. It's too perfect. It's too perfect. It's almost like as if... It's like it's the same size, but the books are not the same size. It's like you would have to... But then... But then you would have to. And it's like nobody's attempted it either. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's the best thing I've ever seen and I must know how it's made. Is that Jeff Goldblum? I don't think it is, but then we have it. <laughs> For me, this project is this bookshelf side table where the books fit so perfectly inside the table that it almost makes me mad. Um, my power just went out. We're in the middle of a snowstorm here. Uh, I think that was the universe telling me to stop being so in my feels and get to work because she literally cut my disco ball light, cut my tunes. It was time, it was time to wake up and get to work. So, <laughs> hello, Danny, come here. Hello. So I think that's, oh. <laughs> so I think that's exactly what we should do. If you're just joining, hi, my name is Becky. Welcome to our channel. We DIY things all the time. It's my favorite thing to make things, especially things that I've been thinking about or wanting to do for such a long time. I'm glad to do this video today and check some things off my Pinterest board of DIYs. So, I'm gonna start with the one that I know a little bit more what I'm doing, and that's this guy here. So I happen to actually have a whole bunch of cane sheeting from past DIYs, and this should definitely be enough to cover the parts I need to cover, which are namely just like the outer bit of the circle and the back here. The doors, I am still undecided on those doors. Maybe we won't even talk about the doors. Hello darkness, my old friend. I think this project will be one of those ones that develops as we go, so we'll do a step, evaluate how we like it, then decide our next step from there. I, I have fun with those kind of projects. I don't think everything needs to be perfectly stepped out before you start doing anything, because sometimes things just make sense as you go. So I'm gonna start with what I know, which is this. So the secret to getting the best results when using cane is to actually soak it in some warm water for like 20 to 30 minutes before you apply it. That will let the cane relax and stretch out. So once you staple it into place, when it dries, it will shrink back down and become that nice tight cane weaving that looks so great in projects. So I have my cane soaking in the sink and I thought this would be a good time to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Karma. 
If you don't already know what Karma is, Karma is a free app slash Chrome extension that ensures you never miss another price drop or coupon code ever again. All their information is linked below. My tried and true method of using Karma has always been to alert me of coupon codes at checkout, but actually my new favorite feature of Karma is their list feature, which allows you to save products you're thinking about buying into wish lists and it will let you know when it becomes on sale or there's like a coupon code available for you to use for that product. This is actually another method of um, how I decide what projects get made off of my Pinterest board that we've been talking about. So for example, one of the things on my list is another punch needle rug, but by the time you buy all the different colors and types of yarn you're looking for, it can really add up. So I actually went to the Michaels website and saved a bunch of different types of yarn I was looking at into my Karma list. And when I get the notification that the yarn is on sale, that is when I will purchase it and that's likely when that project will get finished. <laughs> to get started, simply go to the Karma website and click the Add to Chrome button. This will then take you to the Chrome web store where you can simply add the extension to your browser. From here, you can visit any of your favorite online stores to start looking for discounts. My first stop was Michael's for the yarn that I was looking for. I saved several different kinds of yarn to my Karma account so that if there is a price drop or a relevant coupon, I will be notified via email or mobile push. The process is not only easy on desktop, it's super easy on mobile as well. Because I have a lot of projects on the go all of the time, I created a few lists in my Karma account to organize wanted items into specific categories. I saved the yarn to my punch needle rug list, and this way I can have a clear picture of not only what my items are, but what the status is of all of them. The cool thing about Karma is that once you're ready to check out, a coupon alert will pop up and this will scan the web for coupon codes and apply them automatically. This particular feature is for desktop only, so the Chrome extension is a must. Also, when you shop with select retailers, Karma gives cash back to you and a good cause. This is part of their Karma Gives initiative. So if this feels like something you'd like to try out, you can get Karma's free Chrome extension using my link below. All right, here is how we're looking. Um, the edges need to be cleaned up a little bit, but it's pretty good. Got the back done and side wrapped all the way around. I'm even more confused than when I started. Okay. Okay, I've come to the hardware store to think. I do some of my best thinking in the aisles of the hardware store. It's where things come to me, okay? I think this is the material I'm gonna to need to make my bookshelf stool side table out of. But how? I don't know. I feel like if I just stand there for long enough, it might just come to me. I don't Good morning, friend. My coffee cup has a little shih tzu on it. So precious. Um, so, okay, a little bit of a real talk moment, which I'm not sure if this is something I wanna do. I like the natural cane bamboo look, it's beautiful. But I also think 
the version in black is really striking and cool, like a bit more edgier than your traditional boho style, and would cover the staples nicely because right now it's just a little, little glint, a little glimmer of silver that's throwing this off. So I think what I'm gonna do, because I don't like making decisions by myself, <laughs> I'm gonna ask Instagram and our YouTube community page, so make sure that you're following with the bells on so you don't miss when these things happen, because by the time you're watching this, it's too late. You already voted, or you didn't, if you didn't have the notifications on. What am I saying? I'm gonna go now and ask, should I do the natural wood or should I paint it black? And go from there. Yeah. Let me grab my phone. Here we go. Okay. Post it. I'm gonna leave this for a little bit, come back, see what the results are, and then maybe that will help me. Give me some clarity. It's not like I, I always do what you say, but it does often like make me come to a decision a little better that way. But in the meantime, there is another step to this that I wanna do, um, and it's pretty easy. We can do that now. Okay, one little leggy. I think this is gonna work. Truthfully, I don't know. Sweet! Hmm, <laughs> that's cute. So I was able to take some wooden dowels and screw them into a board underneath here to act as a little riser so I could make my whole unit taller. And I think it's really cute. It doesn't match yet, but I think it will when I'm done, which speaking of, let's check that pole. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. We're not vibing on the same level today. Everyone's voting for the light wood, which am I surprised? No, she's not surprised. <laughs> I, I, let me just say my thing. I would have been with you. I am down for that color vibe. I have some light wood cane in my house, but I just think the way it's going, there's too many mismatched tones of wood on this that I, I gotta paint it all the same color. I think I have to, I really do. Sorry. <laughs> She's there, but also such a hot mess right now, okay? I think I need a break. Okay, I've been thinking about it. And I've made some progress on <laughs> how I'm gonna tackle the impossible book. We need a name for this thing. I wanna call it a bookshelf, but it's not a shelf. It's a, it's a side table. The book table. The book table. Believe it or not, going to the hardware store and just staring at my options really did help. It, it shook some things loose. <laughs> I think I've got an idea. I should also say, this is my giant pile of books. These are what I will be using to fill my book table. Most of them are thrifted um, and they're all design architecture books. A lot of it about mid-century design, which is just a passion of mine. Let me actually show you my favorite one out of the pile. This one is actually a real treasure. And part of the reason why I wanted to do this project in the first place, because I believe that this deserves like a very special place to go. Therefore, like the custom book table is where this will live. So this book is called Tomorrow's House and it was written by George Nelson and Henry Wright. You probably know some of George Nelson's pieces. He is an iconic designer, but this book is literally from the 40s and it was like an educational book on how designers and architects should design homes with future thinking in mind. So basically, this is like a time capsule. This is what designers' ideas of futuristic homes would look like in the 40s. Chapter two has one of my all-time favorite pages because it just roasts all the classic design pieces that people would have in their home in the 40s. And it has little drawings down here that shows the common pieces you'd find in homes and basically what's wrong with them. <laughs> See this table here? It says, this storage space up here is useless. This little side cabinet, they label it dust collector. <laughs> this, this is really funny. This little chandelier pendant thing, it's neither illumination nor decoration. So they're basically saying it doesn't really light the room and it's ugly, don't use it. <laughs> 
I love the sass that they have in this book. It's so good. And one more thing, just because I'm being nerdy. We're geeking out together. This is just so interesting to me. Um, let me find the last page where I just think this is so interesting. Um, now remember, this book was written in the 40s, way before we knew what we were doing with electricity, let alone solar power and any sort of solar panels to power a home at all. But yet, there is a chapter on solar heating. So basically their idea of a solar heated home is to actually build most of the base of the home out of concrete because they knew that stone and concrete held on to heat really well. So all that to say there's so much fascinating stuff therefore it needs to go in my custom book table along with a lot of other really cool books that I have. Okay I was about to tell you my plan. That's what I was going to do. So this table is going to be built out of slices. Each book is going to get its own slice of the table. Think of it as a loaf of bread. Each book is a single slice of bread and together we make a loaf and the loaf looks like a side table, okay? You with me? So basically we need to think of each slice of bread as containing both a book and not a book. <laughs> and the spaces where there is not a book, there will be wood, okay? If you're not following, don't worry. I'm mostly saying this for myself so that I can confirm that my plan is accurate. <laughs> so I'm going to draw the side profile of my um, side table here. So this is one slice of my table. Many put side by side will make my table. And so each slice is going to contain a book in the slice, which is how the books will fit nicely in this table. So this is a slice of wood, and within that, one book is going to live. So let's say our book is this size. Book. This area here is the book, and this area here is the not book. And now each slice is going to look a little bit different because each one of my books is a different size. So for as many books as I have, we're going to have many slices and they all are going to look a little bit different. Each slice is going to be the same main size, but the book to not book ratio will be different. So some may look like this, some may look like this. And if we have a really small book, one might look like this. I think this is gonna work. I think this is going to work. I really do. This is why I like having two projects on the go so when I get tired of one or I'm stuck and don't know what to do with one, I can bounce back to the other. Um, I've been delaying painting the shelf downstairs, which is why I came up here to think more about this table. Now I think I know what I'm doing with this table, but I don't have the wood yet. That might be tomorrow's project, so there's a standstill on this. I think now we'll hop back to the first project. Can I place an order for pickup? <sighs> What's the temperature outside right now? It's minus 14 degrees. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's minus 21. Um, while I was waiting for my dinner, I went ahead and tested actually a bunch of different colors because I sort of second-guessed myself as I was picking paint. I had a bunch of really fun colors in the basement, um, which I thought maybe I wanted to do something retro. Turns out I don't. But <laughs> interesting of interesting is I actually ended up finding um, this color that I've used in my backyard. It's a very neutral, like almond kind of creamy color. <laughs> and. Funny enough, it actually looks like a natural wood toned color, but in paint form. And it is kind of like what you guys all picked. So I think that's my favorite. <laughs> I tried the black too. I just, I don't know, man. I feel like half the time the DIY just picks itself. <laughs> Once I start working, whatever it wants to be is what it will be.
Okay, I am here in the office today because finally time to make this book table. I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and now I think I, I know what I'm doing and we just have to do it. So, what are we doing? So because I'm making this whole table out of books and all my books are different sizes, I need all of my slices of the table to be those different sizes as well. So I've decided to make this table out of this plywood material here because you can get this in so many different sizes. It comes in like quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch. And that's exactly what I bought is a whole bunch of these different sizes, which I can piece together almost like Lego and build slices that are the exact size of my book. So that's what I've done. I've cut a whole ton of these pieces and layered them together to fit the books. And with each one, it's a different combination. Some you could just use one sheet and it fits. Others need to layer two. Like for example, to make this book, I used a three quarter piece and a half inch piece, which when put together, you can see it's the exact same size, which is pretty cool. So I've done this for all of the books and now it's time to do the magic. And that is to remove the part of the slice where the book is gonna go. Which remember my drawing guys, there is book and not book. <laughs> so what I need to do now is go into all of my slices, lay down my book per slice, mark where it's gonna go and cut that so that once the book is in place, we can then have like a full sheet again. I really hope this makes sense. I think it's one of those things you just have to see and, and be amazed when it comes together. <laughs> okay. Maybe people on YouTube can help me track down who made this table. I need to speak to them. I need to know why you thought to invent this. Because now that I've seen it as a product, I can't get it out of my head and I have to make it. But who would think to invent this in the first place? You know what I mean? Why would you do that? Guys, tell me this piece of wood does not totally look like this album art. There's a part of this project that just doesn't sit well with me, and that's the permanence of it. The fact that once this table is assembled and glued together, it can only ever hold those books forever. And of course, that's what looks so cool about it, but I also have been thinking a lot about the sustainability of the things that we create. Can they change and adapt with us? Can we recycle and reuse them in other ways down the line? And a giant glued together block of plywood says no. So I've come up with a plan that makes it possible to add or remove books to the table in the future. With my pieces all stacked in proper order, I'm using some clamps to hold the table together for now. Now the clamps are holding it together in a non-permanent way, which is what I'm aiming for, but they aren't cute. Place them, I'm using a long drill bit to drill all the way through my table in four spots. Okay, I'm gonna do it. This is where I maybe wreck the whole project. It's fine. Then I'll be using these threaded rods and some connector cap nuts to hold the whole table together. Think of it like I'm giving my table a giant piercing unindustrial, if you will. I think it's pretty genius. It took me a while to come up with that one. This way, if I ever wanna remove or add slices to my table, I just need to adjust the length of these threaded rods. No glue required. I think it worked. I 
think it's holding. <laughs> it actually is kind of meta because it looks like a giant book. I can't believe that. I mean, I expected it to work, but a part of me was like, no, when I take the clamps off, it's gonna just like. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> After a bit of sanding to make all of my edges nice and flush, my book table is now ready to go home. Oh, I've literally got like white mascara from all the sawdust on my face. Let's go home. And with a little bit of styling, this is how both of my pieces turned out. I am just beyond with the fact that I figured out this book table and all the books fit in it so perfectly and it looks absolutely beautiful. I do want to mention that I have future plans to A, seal this with a clear coat and B, get a custom piece of glass made for the top so that we can use it more um, as a table. Right now I don't really want to be putting things on the books because I don't want to damage them, but those are things I will get to. And my little crate and barrel upcycled piece just turned out so beautiful. It's like the perfect amount of like a statement piece while also still kind of blending in well with the rest of my space. Really happy with that one as well. And I'd like to know if there's anything that you guys have on a secret list that you are aiming to get to one day. Um, let me know. It might inspire some future projects of my own. And one final thank you to Karma for being today's sponsor. You can get the Karma Chrome extension at the link below and start saving today. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed it, would love for you to subscribe because I want you here around more often and hit that notification bell so you're notified when we upload again next time. See you soon, bye! I'm so excited to bring you along today as I work on some of my home DIYs that have been on the list. And maybe I'll fill you in on some of my plans for some larger makeovers that you're gonna see from me this year. Sometimes doing math is so rewarding. <laughs> you're like, that's not right. That's not <laughs> Each one of these pots is like a little graveyard of a plant that used to be.